This is kind of like the old Fanatic against the new Fanatic. The best two teams are facing for the title. We have been the team to beat during the whole split. We both know how we play, so it's going to be a lot about mind game. The biggest goal here for us is getting first seed. Not having the first seed would be a bit disappointed. We have made it, we are really good and I feel like we can actually beat them. He has no flash, he has no flash. For me, when I'm playing Origin, it really feels like I'm, I'm being put to test. I just know that we will win. We can take easily a game in the final. We're gonna have to come in strong to fight them off. We have the advantage. It's going to be Ferrari against Ferrari. Who are you going to cheer for? Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the finalists competing today for the European LCS Summer Split Championship, Fnatic and Origin. Well, what a wealth of experience between all these players, but you can't know what you're going to feel in this moment. They must be incredibly excited to take their computers and just play that game. So much anticipation. This is the matchup a year in the making. Old Fnatic versus new Fnatic. This is going to be an absolutely huge final here for the summer split. I also think that they come on stage, they're very confident looking. I feel like they really want to brawl and make it happen. How do you guys think this is going to influence them? I mean, you're prepared for that moment, then you step on and you see all these people cheering for you. Uh, uh, the fact, what I think is so beautiful, because I think when they separated the ways, like one year ago, I think they had like this idea in their mind that they might face each other at a stage like this, and then it happens. I think there's been a lot of built-up suspension coming up to this. Yeah. Beautiful, yeah, beautiful I think this energy between them and then the crowd mm. is actually going to make the best series of League of Legends so far. Mm. Five games a dream. That is a big statement. That is a big statement. I, uh, I do have to maybe, maybe think about things slightly differently, though. I, Origin, they are the team that could beat Fnatic. Unfortunately for me today, I don't think they're going to be the team that is going to put the one behind 21 and one on Fnatic, unfortunately. But I think it's going to be a close set of games nonetheless. We'll see what happens. Let's take a look at the lineups for our two contenders, starting for Fnatic, who are on the blue side in game one. Hoonie, Rainover, Febivin, Reckless, Yellowstar, and their coach, Daylor. They're looking to give them their first loss of the split. Origin with Soaz, amazing. X Beckett, Niels, Miffy, and their coach, Leda. Well, you mentioned it already. Uh, we have to start by talking about Fnatic 21-0. Fantastic run so far, impressive numbers, but is it fair to say that they have been unchallenged so far in the playoffs? I think yes. Right now, they're the only team that can consistently come back from a gigantic deficit. And that's really hard to do. You don't see many teams being able to do that or do it multiple times. So the fact that they're able to do it is like, when do you actually win the game against Fnatic? I think even though the game against UOL was pretty much a stomp, I think they showed immense quality. And I think comparing them to their playoff selves, to their like summer split self, I think there's still a massive improvement. So we also have to look at OG side then, and the story mostly when you go up against Fnatic is what can the other team do? Where are the ins? We gotta start by looking at the jungle. Rainover versus Amazing, might that tip the scales? Yeah, there's an analogy we've been kind of using is that, uh, you know, if the five wealthiest men in Europe were Fnatic, Rainover would be ranked number five just because of how every other player has looked <laughs> so great. But you compare him to the rest of Fnatic and he looks the weakest. You compare him to the rest of the field and he is still one of the top five wealthiest. So when you look at this matchup, Rainover might look 
look like a weakness, but he is not. However, Amazing has been very aggressive when it comes to his jungle play in the early game in the last couple of weeks. So that is one area that Origin can actually look to attack potentially. I think this kind of weakness, though, is shored up by Yellowstar's kind of leadership. They're not really going to be able to always catch him out as long as they're playing as like a full five unit team. So although he does have his weaknesses, I would agree, I don't think Amazing is going to be able to capitalize as much as you think. I feel jungle as a role is the kind of role that kind of gets defined by your teammates. If your teammates are doing well, you're going to look good no matter how bad you play because it's like, for example, if your team three lanes are winning, you roll a dice and any number is good for you, then it's fine, you know. But in a losing position, junglers look worse. But I think Amazing was the key reason why they beat you guys, probably. That, that's kind of true. I can't fight mm. that. So up against Rainover in this one, uh, well, of course, in their semifinal versus UOL, that was a convincing one, so you could say that didn't teach us that much. What it did teach us is that uh, Rainover can play at least, and he can pretty, play it pretty darn well as well. Of course, we saw it yesterday with Lulex. Uh, is it very good for Fnatic that they have that card in their pocket as well coming into this series? Yeah, Elise is a really, really high early pressure jungler. So the fact that he can at least show that he plays it means now they have to decide, do we pick or do we ban this? If he'd never shown it before, maybe they can roll the dice. Maybe he doesn't play it. But showing it at least adds a threat on the team. For sure. I think the biggest question for me coming into the playoffs is like, is Lulex and Rainover going to pick up the new champions? And that question has been answered with the correct answer. <laughs> Definitely. Let's look at uh, the mid lane though as well. Febivan versus Xpeke because Yamato, we have been talking about this a lot, that you feel that Xpeke is kind of the weak link on that team. Yeah, he's kind of the reign over of Origin, of course. <laughs> I feel that um, Xpeke, I am kind of hoping that against HK he was kind of hiding what he's going to show because he was picking up that Ari and Ari to me, even though Ari has had a good run during the playoffs, so it kind of contradicts what I'm going to say now, but I think Ari is one of the weaker champions right now in the meta. And I think the biggest advantage that Fabivan has coming into this is the fact that he plays the Emperor of Shurima, Azir. Can you say that again? Emperor of Shurima. That was great, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I do agree, Febby probably has a better Azir, mm. but Febby hasn't really shown Ari recently, mm. and he hasn't shown Fizz yet, which in my opinion is a terrifying mid lane to play against. So by Peke being able to bring that out, I think that kind of digs him out of the ditch or yeah. digging him. Like, Fabivan is the kind of guy that kind of sticks to a few champions. That's why I'm hoping Peke is going to bring out something new here. I hope so, but if, if there's one player, unfortunately, that over the summer split didn't show us too much that was new, that's Peke. He showed us a lot of Vladimir, which mm. isn't around anymore. We looked at his recent champions, only a couple shared between the two of them. I wonder whether I expect Peke will go to kind of like the later scaling Orianas that we have seen. I, it just depends what the team wants to play, but I do think that Xpeke, his experience is what could allow him to settle himself into the, that mid lane matchup and maybe give Forbidden a bigger run for his money than people would expect. Yeah, it's all the factors we have to keep into account if we look at a game like this and one of the people that will have that experience but also the rush of playing here is Reckless in that bottom lane mm. and it'll be very important for them that bottom lane matchup. You guys also think that there might be... <laughs> you gotta give him his moment. There might also be a big opportunity, though, for OG to make something happen in that bottom lane. Yeah, I definitely think OG is going to be the aggressors in this right now. So it's really up to them if they can keep an eye on the map, know where Rainover is, and play aggressive when they need it. And Fnatic side, I think they're going to be one, the ones on the back foot the whole game. I think they're going to be trying to survive the 2v2, and I think they're going to really have to push into the 2v1 meta for them. And I, I, oh, go ahead. No, after you, you okay, might okay. Like, I just wanted to point out the fact that uh, I think the biggest advantage Origin has is the fact that uh, they can both play around the top lane and the bot lane. We've seen Fnatic mostly play around Huni and transition that pressure, and I feel like Origin can do both things. I think, though, when you look at Origin specifically in a lane swap, we just saw the stats up there about how good Fnatic are in a lane swap. Mm. One thing Origin specifically do with Soaz uh, is they don't give him the farm. After the first tower dies, uh, Origin actually punish Soaz quite a lot, don't allow him to get farm, and then rely on bringing Amazing to the top lane or teleporting with Soaz. So that's one area that Fnatic can exploit from Origin, is if Origin don't get Soaz back into the game with a play, that's an area that Origin could end up struggling. Now let's talk about that matchup with Huni versus Soaz there. Their uh, most recently played pick. A wealth of experience, especially on the side of Soaz. Who are you calling for? Mm, uh, of course, Huni is the obvious favorite here because to me, Huni is one of the best top players in the world. But I feel like in terms of champion pool, I feel like Soaz has so much experience that he's not going to really get destroyed as we've seen uh, multiple times Huni has done to a lot of top players in the split. One on your team also, yeah. sadly enough. <laughs> 
Well, we will see what happens in that one. Now, for now, though, before things get underway, we're going to step on stage and speak with the man that led Fnatic to yet another LCS final and Worlds 2015, Yellow Star. Thank you.